Catching up on some keyboard content today, we've got the RGB Soaked Karina from Drop. This is a fixed 60% layout hot swap board, currently available only in Andy. I did go with a copper plate because I'd never used one before. We're gonna listen to it with some Drop Holy Pandas as well as some Silent Ink V2s and some lubed NK creams. There's a lot to like here, but there's also some drawbacks. We're gonna get into it. You ready? Let's go. So the Drop Karina kit retails for 120 base US, and for that you're going to get a case, a PCB, your stabilizers, a cable, and some hardware. Obviously you're not going to get switches and caps in a bare bones kit, but oddly missing at that base price is a plate. So you have aluminum, brass, and copper at $20, $30, and $40 on top of the base price. So this can get expensive quick. You may be thinking, well this PCB supports 5 pin switches, so you don't really need a plate. You can mount 5 pin switches directly to the PCB. And if this board supported PCB mount stabs, you'd be right, but it doesn't. So unless you have a standard 60% plate already, which I don't know will fit this case or not, you're gonna need to add one, which basically makes your minimum buy-in price 140 US. The included PCB is a step forward in a couple of ways from the older alt and control PCBs. The trace routes actually look well organized now. It's really thick too. Hot swap sockets here are kale. This PCB feels quality. Also, Drop has finally decided to give us five pin switch support, so no more clipping the legs off your precious switches, like my forever clipped NK creams, for instance. They are still north facing sockets. That may garner some criticism from keyboard purists out there who are looking to avoid any potential interference between certain combinations of switches and cherry profile caps. But so much of Drop's keyboard aesthetic is based around RGB shine through caps, and the vast majority of those have a tendency to function better with north facing LEDs than south. You also have a pretty good amount of down firing LEDs on the underside to support underglow and you'll see they've retained their habit of offering both left and right side mount USB-C. Also included in the box are drops plate mount stabilizers and I'd love to tell you that they've been improved but they haven't. The best part about them now is that they arrive disassembled so you can mod them prior to assembly and you pretty much have to with these. They need to be clipped so that they hit flat on the bottom and you're going to need to break out some lube as well. I recommend 205 grade zero for the plastic housings and I normally use dielectric grease but I'm using some new lube from Space Cables. It's their XHT BDZ and this stuff goes on thick. Like use this stuff sparingly but it looks like it will stay put longer than dielectric. I've been using this on one of my portico builds for a few weeks now. It's been really nice. At this point I'm honestly baffled as to why Drop continues to include these stabilizers with these boards. They're always a point of criticism in reviews surrounding their keyboards. I have to believe that somewhere they have a warehouse full of millions of these that they are just slowly trying to burn down stock on. Because they are plate mount, replacement options are limited too, pretty much exclusively to Cherry OEM which always seem to be in short supply. The advantage of real Cherry stabs is better tolerances which means less wiggle room and therefore less rattle. Basically the only benefit to plate mount is that they're dead easy to access. Like if you need to mod or maintain them, you won't have to disassemble your case, which is good because this is the first time in all the keyboards I've ever looked at that I've pulled stabilizer stems clean out of the housings when swapping caps. But drop again, please, from the bottom of my heart, improve these stabs or better yet, give us PCB mount. The case itself is a really simple frosted acrylic with just four soft rubber feet on the bottom. You do have brass standoffs permanently mounted in the mold here. This is just a tray mount. So everything you put in just sits in the case. You'll then have standoffs to support the plate, which then finally screws down. For the plate, like I said, I went with copper because I've never used it. I use aluminum often and I use brass in my daily driver, my KBD 75 V2. So why not copper? It is a pretty pricey add-on at $40 for the plate. It arrives really well packed. It's heavy, it's gorgeous and full flawless from a quality control standpoint. The only thing I will point out about it is that hot swap boards by nature see a lot more trauma than the plate on a solder board because you're constantly pulling switches in and out. And while every plate on every hot swap board I've ever had eventually develops scratches, it feels super bad to scratch up a plate that costs this much and looks this nice. Oddly missing from the plate choice is FR4 or a fiberglass plate like we saw in the Portico. You'll also find them in like the GK and the GX boards. It's white as well. So it's curious that there's not one available. For caps, I went with the Mito Canvas X DA set because I've always liked it. It's one of Drop's more pricey cap offerings. It's not shine through, but any of their entry level Skyline sets will work great here and they take good advantage of those north facing LEDs. The included cable is a really thick rubberized USB-A to USB-C. Because this board is power hungry, to really make the most of this board, you really need to use the included cable. Or you need to have a motherboard that has variable voltage output USBs in the BIOS so you can really crank up the juice. The low light RGB effect is absolutely gorgeous with the included cable and it's reduced heavily when going with with even a very high quality coiled cable.
The sound of the board is decent stock, but as you heard, it really depends on your switch choice. I like the copper plate, but you do become aware of some resonance issues going on in the case. Like I don't find that the case itself makes any noise, but if your switches have ping, like those pandas really do, even lubed, then I find that the case will definitely amplify that. Normally I would just line the inside of the case with sorbethane and call it done. These run like $25 a sheet on Amazon, but this board has those down firing LEDs on the back of the PCB. Blocking that out with sorbethane kills all the lower glow RGB. In addition to that, I use sheets with a 0.125 inch or roughly 3.2 millimeter thickness. 0.10 inch is the thinnest available. While there is room in the tray for the sheet and it looks well and fine, there's not room for the USB-C connectors and the hot swap sockets are all mashed in there too, which is gonna put undue strain on the PCB over time. Bottom line, don't waste your time or your money with sorbethane on this board. I couldn't even get it to hold together, like get that middle standoff in there to even give you a sound test on that. There may be a middle ground somewhere between aesthetics and acoustics if you're using like a translucent foam or a shelf paper, but it's just something to be aware of. I would have to have some seriously quiet switches if I was gonna run this board full time. By default, you can cycle the same RGB modes we've seen on every drop board before and they all look really good here. The diffusion on this case is great. Remapping and more granular RGB control will all take place in QMK so you get really deep functionality but you trade convenience. I would recommend that you dive in and start experimenting with the remapping right out of the box because the default key map it ships with is really weird. Like your function key is where your left alt should be and they give you an additional windows key on the right side as well. Weird stuff. So just remap to match the cap layout of alt function menu and control and it will feel much more normal. The arrow cluster is pretty weird too. It's gonna to be on PL, semicolon, and apostrophe. I recommend remapping caps lock as function and have your arrows be IJKL so you don't have to move off home row. If I'm totally missing the point of this default key map, please feel free to share some insight in the comments because honestly, I can't call it. So all in all, I like this board. I'm not over the moon with it. Something about a true 60% and its tiny footprint does have a certain charm to it. 65% has really taken over as the go-to small form factor layout with its dedicated arrows. All of their keycap sets now fully support 65%. So it's curious that they didn't want to go that way. My only guess is they didn't want to risk pulling sales away from the alt. The frosted acrylic with the super bright LEDs is always an attractive choice. This is a look arguably made famous by the KBD Tofu and it's really well executed. Here. Provided you lube the stabilizers, which I treat as mandatory on drop keyboards, and they're still not really up to par, I was okay with the sound of this board. It's decent enough that I wouldn't feel the need to sound dampen the board with certain switches. Obviously, I would like to have some sound dampening inside the board, but the aesthetics and the design make it really challenging to do so. What I will say is that in all the time I've had this board, I've had no issues with the PCB at all, no power draw issues, and no key chatter of any sort. The low points here will be the stabs, of course, and the price. 140 entry level is crazy high for a standard 60% layout with a tray mount by today's standards. The keyboard market only continues to get more and more competitive as time goes on. It feels like a big race to the bottom for companies with customers reaping the benefit of that. In my mind, there's two things Drop has going for it. One, they're a one-stop shop for everything you need to build and outfit your board. And two, they have stock. Like you can order these today and they ship tomorrow. There's something to be said for that. Custom keyboards will punish you with group buys and wait lists and out of stock stuff. Like just go on KBD fans website and check it out for yourself. It's hard to get your hands on anything. As always, affiliate links down below if you'd like to get your hands on one of these. Any questions, hit me in the comments. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.